Hello, my name is Jerry Toner. I'm president of the Friends of Simsbury Farms. And I want to welcome all of you here today uh, to the wonderful Simsbury Farms facility. Um, I just want to, uh, uh, you know, first of all, uh, thank a few people, particularly Simsbury Community uh, Media and Patrick Fallon, uh, for making this possible. Um, basically, today we're going to uh, hear from a number of people uh, who use the facility, work at the facility. Um, all of whom have had uh, Simsbury Farms has been a big part of their lives. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what the Friends of Simsbury Farms actually is. About eight years ago, uh, Jerry Wetchen and Art Emmons and others uh, got together with the idea of creating a fundraising arm uh, for the farms to help raise money and facilitate donations for improvements that might not otherwise be uh, provided or could not be funded by the town. Since that time, we've had uh, many improvements, many visible improvements. We've had many generous donations. And we've, uh, through our sponsors, uh, who you'll hear from a little bit later, uh, we've been able to really enhance what we've been able to do here. Um, I do want to uh, uh, tell our viewers, and, and this is important that they listen, uh, recreation is the word of the day today. All day. You can post on the Friends of Simsbury Farms Facebook page and be eligible for a $25 gift card, which will be selected randomly. If you post what you love most about Simsbury Farms, and there are many things about it, so you shouldn't have any trouble coming up with that, but please go, go to our Facebook page and do that. All day, also, you can post your old photos from Simsbury Farms. If we get 20 posts, we will pick one photo to also win a $25 gift card. Again, the word of the day, the first person to email the word of the day, which I just mentioned, will win a $25 gift card. So email that to info at friendsofsimsburyfarms.com before 5 p.m. on September 5th. Um, I just want to really, again, acknowledge uh, all the folks that have made what we do possible. Uh, it would not be without the generosity of, of not only sponsors, those who participate in our upcoming golf tournament, which for the second year in a row has been sold out. Um, but I do want to mention our sponsors because, uh, as I said before, without them, this wouldn't happen. Uh, Mitchell Auto is our, our signature sponsor for the second year. Uh, Ethel Walker School, Northwest Community Bank, Garrity Asphalt and Reclaiming, uh, the, Wor the Greg Work Family, v Valley Heating and Air Conditioning, Westminster School, Wizards and Dragons, which are a group of players here who got together and, and generously contributed uh, to be major sponsors, Vincent Funeral Home, McLean, and Ken Eilers. Uh, just a big thank you to all of them. and. Um, uh, with that, I will uh, uh, turn it over to uh, <laughs> Kelly Kearney. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Uh, so the voice you're hearing off camera is Kelly Kearney, and I'm going to ask a few questions. Jerry, thanks. Thanks for putting all that together and for helping people understand what, what the day is all about. And specifically, it's about bringing visibility to the Friends of Simsbury Farms and to this great complex that we have. So I really appreciate you taking the time and everybody that's off camera that's here and going to be a part of today. Very much appreciate it, and hopefully it's... Uh, it's entertaining, interesting, and moves along as well. So with that in mind, I just really wanted to get a quick uh, sense from you about some of the projects that the Friends have helped fund in recent years sure. and kind of what that means to the complex. Sure. Well, going back, you know, eight years ago when, uh, when the Friends was first formed, uh, I, I can remember the first ones being people donating uh, memorial trees and funding some of the benches that you see here in, in honor or memory of a, of a loved one. Um, you know, since then, we've, there's probably every part of the facility here has gotten our support in one way or another, whether, um, you know, it's the rink, whether the pools, the David Emmett Memorial Fitness Trail. Uh, we've tried to spread it around as much as we could. And as I said earlier, we also facilitate donations, and there's probably none more visible than the donation made by David McElroy and his family to build the basketball courts and lights. So we've really kind of run the gamut, Kelly. Uh, we've covered a lot of areas. We've done uh, improvements, large and small. And the other thing that we've done is, is to uh, uh, get with other groups. We've, we've, we've uh, jointly funded 
uh, equipment purchases with the with the men's club and the town. So that's another thing that we're able to do, maybe make things happen that otherwise wouldn't, and you know, through the through the assistance of others. That's great, Terry. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned was sponsors and sponsored donations and sponsor support. And I was hoping you could just take a second quickly and talk about the fact that sponsor support's not just for the day of event, right. like the golf tournament, but it has broader reach and uh, uh, you know a longer, uh, almost year-round uh, visibility. Sure, and that's what we try and, and, and tell our sponsors, that, that we, we want to provide year-round visibility for them. And whether it's through our different facilities, this is obviously a year-round facility, but uh, through the, our different uh, media, uh, we have, uh, uh, a screen down in the main building that, that the department uh, advertises their programs, also shows our sponsors uh, through uh, uh, rink boards down on the ice rink. Uh, you know, through various means, we, we and our website, probably first and foremost, um, because that does, you know, give us the most visibility. So we want to be a year-round partner uh, with our sponsors, and when we feel that's what hopefully the, one of the attractions that they see as well as being associated with a great facility. That's awesome, Jerry. And that's, that perfectly captures the uh, the point we were trying to make. And, you know, I'll, I'll wrap it up with you and say, you know, one of the things I wanted to point out was the Friends of Simsbury Farms kind of took its model from the Friends of Simsbury Library. And I think that if folks are kind of interested to hear about what it is, we, the, the Friends of Simsbury Farms, a nonprofit, a 501c3, dedicated to the improvements of the complex, and a group that led by you, by the way, I'm not sure you mentioned that you are the president of the organization, uh, has done great things. So I thank you very much, and uh, I think we're going to have you uh, introduce uh, Wendy. So, yeah, it, it's my pleasure uh, now to introduce our first selectman, Wendy Max Studis, who is also an avid user uh, of Simsbury Farms and could give some of, uh, some of her thoughts. Wendy? Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Um, I brought with me um, another member of the board is Selectman. I'm for Selectman Wendy Max Studis, and I brought with me Heather Getz, who is a member of the board of Selectman. Um, she's not just a member of the board of Selectman, she is also a fellow golfer, and both of us um, try to play together every Tuesday morning in the um, Simsbury Farms Golf League. So I just want to say, let Heather say hello. Hello. <laughs> Oh, anyway, so we're, we haven't practiced this, so we're just doing this um, okay. au naturel. That's perfect. So, um, Jerry, I'm sorry, Kelly, Kelly yep. is going to ask us some questions, and yeah. this is live TV, correct? Yeah, you know what, live <laughs> TV, you can't go wrong. The point of it is is to bring visibility, right? There's no mistakes. Being introduced, first of all, tell us what you do. You're on the Board of Selectmen? Uh, yes, I'm okay. on the Board of Selectmen. Great. Um, okay, how many years now? And so this is my second year. Second year on the Board of Selectmen. Yes. So you are or are not up this year? I am, yes. Okay, just wanted to double check. <laughs> we are all this is, up this year. There you go. But yeah. this is not a political piece, but I wanted to make sure if anybody was interested. Uh, so I wanted to ask both of you, and Wendy, I did kind of throw this out first, but it, you use the facility pretty extensively. And if you want to just tell us a little bit about how you see it as part of the community and also what some of the highlights of the, the facility are that you can share with us. Okay, so um, as we just said, we both are golfers here every Tuesday morning, and um, we're not that good, but getting better, right? How we're improving we're every day. We're improving. Um, so we use the Farms um, Golf Course. I have to say my husband is a regular fixture on the driving range. I'm giving him a plug, but he is probably <laughs> up here every day hitting balls. Um, I have recently started playing pickleball, so I've been playing up here, and I thank uh, members of the Parks and Rec team, Chris Boswell, actually, who has organized a tournament that we play in, and have Heather, you were up here playing tennis the other day, and you're an avid tennis player. Yes, yeah, so I was just here playing recently. Um, you know, I think the one thing I really love about Simsbury Farms is that it provides opportunities for our residents of all ages to engage and come together in a healthy way. Um, my children have been enjoying the farm since they were very little, uh, the camps as well as the ice rink. Um, and yes, I enjoy playing tennis here as well as paddle, but um, I especially enjoy the nine hole women's league. Uh, actually, regardless of the weather, I look forward to coming out on a Tuesday morning. It's always beautiful and uh, the women are wonderful who participate in it. Uh, so yeah, even when I score 70 and nine holes, which is more times than not, I still go home happy. <laughs> That's good. 
I, I want to say one more thing. I am a hockey mom, was a hockey mom, and spent many, many, many hours up here watching my son play my squirts, peewees. I don't think bantams had to play up at the farms. Um, um, before you had the nice warming hut, we used to sit in the side. I've tied many a skate in the locker room, um, done a lot of swimming lessons and sitting at the um, the the waiting pool, having to sit on the side of that. So just, you know, since we've been living here, we've been here quite a bit. That's awesome. And I believe there is a tie back to Captain Boudreaux, who is here today helping us uh, on the volunteer side with the hockey. Is that not right? Yes. Kellen was on the, um, Kellen is older than my son, Kevin, but they did play. Did they overlap for a year on the high school team? I don't, maybe not. <laughs> Or not on the high school team, but we did we did play. Yes, Kellen was number four, I think, and my son took over number four also. So. And point being, the utilization of facilities kind of is a, a broad uh, spectrum of different uh, things to use throughout the complex, and, and uh, it, you guys used it for sure. So uh, thank you very much. Any final comments? Uh, any final highlights? Things you'd like to throw out there for about the farms or? Well, I was going to just say we noticed today playing. We saw the irrigation work that's going on, and that's something that our board funded. I think it was about. Tom, $3 million, $2 million? $2.55 million. $2.55 million. We approved that. And we also have a new playground going in up here that was approved by the board. So um, given the Board of Selectmen a plug and, and the Board of Finance, too, for letting it go through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And, and Sound good? Heather, any, any uh, final thoughts? Um, no, we're just looking forward to uh, seeing all the improvements um, with everything. Uh, that all the work that we have funded. And uh, I just want to say thank you to all the staff that we have here and our Parks and Rec and Tom and everyone who we have working really hard to keep these facilities. They're a true gem. Most towns don't have a public facility like this and uh, we are incredibly fortunate. I have one more thing. I feel like this is bridesmaids <laughs> where they keep fighting for the mic. Um, one thing, I played golf here and then in 1997, I brought my little scorecard and I played in the nine holers and I rejoined because I knew Heather was playing. But one thing that I noted is that I hadn't been here for so many years and you just come in here and there's Tim and Mark and John, John and Karen and they're like, you never left, like you're their old friend. So I just wanted to plug that too. Well, you know what? The interviewer is not supposed to be given plugs, but I'll tell you this. The team is what makes this especially great. Obviously, the facility is unbelievable, but the team, you know, everybody from Brian to Tom to John and Karen and Mark, the whole team is what makes this special. So I'm actually going to have you introduce, speaking of making it special, the director of uh, Parks and Rec. I would be proud to introduce the director of Parks and Rec, Tom Taberski. <laughs> um, he does a great job for us, and I'm going to turn it over to him. Great. Here you go. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you, Heather. Tom, thanks so much, A, for coming in right off of vacation, B, for during vacation, taking the time to answer questions to help us get this organized. People probably don't realize how much extra time you dedicate to what you're doing, and Jerry did as well, your predecessor, Absolutely. but it is appreciated, and it shows. So I'm just going to jump a dive right in and ask you first up, tell us quick, Tom, what are you most proud of about the complex? So, so I'll kind of diverge a little bit. I'll tell you what I'm most proud of at all. Of, of all things is the team members we have here. They, they are so, they take so much pride in the work they do and they care so much about making everybody's visit, regardless of what activity you're doing, skating, walking, running, golf. They take so much pride and so much care to make sure that every visit's safe, safe and enjoyable for everybody. Uh, you have to want to do this. There's a lot of outdoor work up here. They have to want to do it. Um, but they, they come here, you know, they come here and smile um, every day. And, and what else can I do? And that's that's what I'm most proud of. I mean, there's certainly a lot of improvements that we've made over the last over the last 25 years. I've started here in 1999 and and been a part of a lot of projects, small small and large. But since taking over as director, you know, we've been fortunate to have a lot of support from the town and, and groups like the Friends of Simsbury Farms and, and staff support. Um, you know, as Wendy mentioned, we recently started the golf irrigation project. It's underway and expected to finish this fall. Uh, we have the new playground at Sims. Thanks for stealing all my thunder, Wendy. We, we have the new golf, the, the new playground at uh, Sims Ray Farms. It's going to be installed sometime in October. We hope to do a late fall grand opening and get everybody excited about that. Um, we've added the pickleball lines to our courts up here, so there's a lot more play um, on those courts. Um, as Jerry mentioned before, the, the uh, basketball courts and, and um, just recently this summer, we put a new uh, surface on our waiting pool. That's something not everybody's going to notice. And there's a lot of things like that that the town has supported that on a day-to-day -day basis, they do make the facility safe for everybody and increase the, the longevity of, of a lot of our facilities. Uh, we've recently made a bunch of mechanical uh, 
improvements to the mechanicals at the ice rink, which is going to ensure its viability for another 25 years. Um, as I mentioned, we redid the surfacing at the wading pool. Um, we also just finished a project a few years ago with new security fencing and safety fencing around that pool. Um, and we have something else to look forward to next summer is we're going to be rebuilding the sun deck up at Simsbury Farms Pool. So, you know, we've been very fortunate that uh, the boards, um, the Board of Finance, the Board of Selectmen, the Rec Culture Parks and Recreation Commission have all supported these projects. We've got staff that's got a vision for, for making improvements here, every, you know, on a day over day basis. Every, every little day, every day we come in is what else can we do to make it better? Um, we've got great thinkers, John Tebow, Orlando Casiano, Brian Johnson. They're they're out uh, they're out on the ground every day looking to see where we can make these improvements and and we just take it from there. Tom, uh, well said. There's not much I can add to that other than nice uh, nicely put. I feel like you really captured the sense that this is not just about facilities and buildings, but about people. And as a community member that may not have been here or may have just used it briefly, I feel like they should know that it does have year-round programming, right? It's not just a pool, it's not just a rink, so. Oh, 100% right. I mean, there's something going on here, regardless of the time of year or between seasons, there's always something going on. Um, we've got, you know, we're standing here at the golf course. There's a number of golf activities throughout the year. They offer adult lessons, they kid, have kid lessons, we have summer camps. Uh, we've had a number of special events up here. I know they have a glow-in-the-dark tournament coming up soon, so you don't even have to be a regular golfer. It's just something, you know, fun you can do and sign up. Um, We've had the concert here, uh, concert and fireworks here a few weeks ago, which is a big hit for everybody who, you know, may not be up here on a regular basis. But we've got um, uh, skating lessons, swimming lessons. We, we were offering yoga. We had yoga up on the hill this summer. So on Wednesday mornings, if you came up and saw a group of people up on top of the hill, that and wondered, wondered what they were doing. That was an organized yoga class that we hope to continue right through the fall and into next uh, into next summer. Uh, we also use, you know, people may not realize we do pickleball lessons up here. Uh, we've had basketball, pro ba organized basketball programs on the courts. Um, we've had pickleball lessons for kids and adults. Um, we will also use the Simsbury Farms Apple Barn. Again, something that everybody may not know about, but we have adult and youth programming over there. Everything from uh, STEM classes after school to cooking classes for adults and kids. And we've done paint and sip nights for adults. And we hope to do even more of those type of adult craft classes uh, going forward. That's fantastic, Tom. So I'm going to wrap it up by just having you tell the audience if they want to learn more about the various activities going on at the, the farms, what's the best way to find out? So that's a good question. So our website is Simsbury, www.simsburyrec.com. If you go to that website and set up an account, it'll ask you to check off a box to receive emails from us. That's the most important way. That's the best way we're going to get you out and let you know and stay up to date on programming. But if you also want to give us a follow on, on Instagram and, and Facebook, we post a lot of our events and openings and, um, you know, whether if it's, it's a class opening and cancellations, we post all of that on there. So you'll be, you'll be one of the first to know if you either check off the box on the website or go to Facebook, you'll always be up to date on what we have to offer. That's great, Tom. And we just had an experience of live television at its best right there, but that's okay. <laughs> I think we can still hear. So thank you very much very for welcome. sharing that. And I think we're going to hand it off to Jerry Wetchin. Uh, what's the best way to do this, Jerry? I'm coming. So we've got the founder of the Friends of Simsbury Jerry. Farms, yes. Jerry Wetchin, and I'm going to introduce Jerry uh, both as the founder, I'll call you Emeritus as well. That's fine, uh, thank and you. And Jerry, I thought we'd just get a couple of brief remarks from you about the origins, but primarily about why it was built and what it hopes to do going forward. Okay, thanks. Uh, and you're on a tight time frame too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Kelly knows me well. I, I, I sent, tend to speak my piece. Uh, I've been a resident in Simsbury since 1978. And like many other people, they're real estate brokers, bring you up here. And, you know, Simsbury Farms sold our family. Uh, but the the friends... And just put that uh, microphone a little bit closer to your mouth. The friends is, is something special it, from a standpoint of... Uh, I've worked within the, the, the rec department with Jerry Toner many years, whether it was for baseball. I was president of youth hockey for many years. Uh, my kids played hockey here. Uh, play golf. My wife taught uh, the babies in the swimming pool. So uh, the family certainly has utilized the facility. Uh, but we've always had some needs. And, uh, and I've always uh, had some fights with the Board of Selectmen about fulfilling the needs. How about we change that from fights to a gentle back and forth conversation? That, that's not me. <laughs> uh, Dave Bush will tell you, I, I, I get pushy at times, but that's the way you do things. Uh, but Jerry Toder and I were talking about how to do certain things. 
And then one day I was out playing golf uh, with Art Emmons, one of my co-founders. Uh, and Art said, you know, Jerry, what we need is a way for people to donate money to the facility. He says, you know, right now, if I want to give money, I got to give it to the town. And then the town can basically do what, what they want. So uh, with that in mind, I, I talked with Jerry Toner, talked with Mark Deming, who was uh, chairman of Economic Development Commission at the time. And we put together the concept with Jerry's help. And then I presented it to the Board of Selectmen, who uh, uh, wholeheartedly endorsed it. And they uh, assisted us with the town attorney to do all the necessary paperwork. And with their help, I think we got an approval on a nonprofit in a record time. It took three months to get an approval, which was unheard of. Uh, so uh, a lot of people put some good ideas together. Uh, but uh, the fact that we can get money from users as well as non-users to put back into the facility uh, because constantly you're fighting uh, and with other departments within the town that need money. Uh, so this way it's, it maybe lessens the burden on the taxpayers and we get to utilize funds from users and those who uh, are willing to support us uh, through their donations. Uh, one of the things that we need to work on is bequests. There are a lot of people in this town that Simsbury Farms is a very special place. And we want people to know that you can make bequests within your will and in your state planning uh, to help support this facility. And there's many, many children that are benefiting as a result of uh, uh, generous donations from people. So that's that's my spiel. Jerry, that's great. And I think I will uh, will just kind of reiterate what you said. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. It's, it's, they're stewards of any kind of donations. There's a board of directors that has fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the numbers, the dollars that are given are well uh, taken care of, correct? Yeah, and we, and we don't do things haphazardly. We, we talk with the uh, recreation department. Uh, everything's got to get approved by the uh, uh, culture parks and rec department. There's a list of projects that the uh, department would like to fund. Uh, sometimes uh, we have some disagreements because these should be funded by donations. We don't want to fund things that should be paid for by taxpayer dollars. Right. And I'll just wrap it up by making sure we reiterate these are projects and enhancements that are outside the boundaries of the typical operational expenses. Is that's that right? That's correct. Okay. Well, Jerry, I think that's great. And I want to say thank you. Great. Especially thank you very well, much. Before I let you go, I have to okay. say thank you to you and to Mark Deming, as well as Art Emmons, which I believe were the three founders. Three original founders, founders yes. And now, nor normally we would have uh, you hand this to Dawson Teft, who is with Mitchell Auto Group. But uh, Dawson is tied up selling vehicles, uh, promoting them at the moment. He called and said he couldn't make it. So we want to say thank you to them. And if you want to uh, give a two-second uh, uh, quick pitch on Mitchell Auto Group in terms of their their uh, sponsorship and what that means well, to us. Well, you know, you think about the large donors. That's the important thing. It's wonderful to get the dollars here and there, but we don't do things without some large donors and large contributions. Uh, it can be uh, as in the form of a, uh, I know we got an anonymous donation several years ago that people didn't want to be acknowledged for the donation, and I think that was great. Uh, but uh, for those large donations, you know, there's large projects that need to be done. Right, right. And, and I feel like, Jerry, that's something that we reiterate, which is the sponsors. It's not just about a one-day event. This is about Absolutely. enhancing the, the complex itself. So we're going to introduce, we're going to have you introduce uh, John Varengia, golf pro John Varengia. And sometimes, you know, folks that aren't golfers might not know who John is. So quick introduction to John, okay. and then, John, I'll dive in with my questions. I'm going to... I'm going to tell you something. This golf course wouldn't be what it is today without John and his staff. And you didn't practice this either, Not correct? at all. Uh, you know, J J John and I talk a lot. Uh, John, myself, and Mike Wallace, our former superintendent, uh, we developed the business plan for the golf course, I want to say uh, six, seven years ago. And as a result of that, you know, th this facility is paying back to the town huge dollars. 
And you don't do that without a good staff. They are the best. I couldn't could agree with you more. I play golf courses all over the country, and no one does it better than John and his well, staff. Well, that's a great what a what a great segue. So thank, thank you very you, much, John. Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Uh, so I'm introducing John Varengia, who is the the head pro here at Simsbury Farms. And yes, John, sir. thanks a million for coming over and not a problem and being a part of it. And I also will say officially thank you so much for all the extra effort that you put in. I know because I've called you plenty of times asking for this, asking for that, helping out, whatever yeah. it might be. You really deserve a lot of credit. And you're part of the team, right? That's Correct. The, that's the one thing. And I know I give you some questions yeah. uh, uh, to ask up front, but you know, I'm gonna ask you quick to mention the team yeah. and what that team means, John. Uh, the team is the whole, basically the whole complex. I mean, my team is consisted of Mark, who's been here for 26 years, just as long as I've been. Uh, Karen, who's been here 22. Tim Lynch has been here even longer than I've been. Um, so we're kind of the core for the pro shop. Um, you know, when Mike left, um, Brian came in and uh, Brian became part of the family. And that's the kind of way that we look at it up here is it's one big family. That's awesome. And I got to say, that's one of the things we're trying to reiterate here, which mm -hmm. is, it's a community, and mm -hmm. it really is. And I think when Wendy mentioned the fact that she had left and come back, yep. you know, from whatever was going on, she was brought in, and it was like she had never left. You know, right. she had, uh, I guess, raising kids or whatever it was that you were doing. And it is. It is a community's feel. And for anybody that's either thinking about enjoying the complex, partaking in various activities, that's the feel. Oh, it's that for you everybody. Get. You know, yeah, it's it not really just is. for golfers. Yeah. So, John, it, as the pro, I guess I have to ask. Why do you love the farms? Like you've been here for a long time. What is it about the farms that you really love the most? Uh, I would say mostly the people. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I came from a place uh, just as busy, Rockledge. Um, that was where I became assistant pro and uh, came over here. Um, Jerry Toner uh, interviewed me. Uh, I got hired uh, from Mary Glassman. And um, ever since then, I got married that same year. So it kind of started my whole life. Um, we, uh, we had, uh, my son, Michael, uh, year after we were here and then two other kids after that, Matthew and uh, Jenna. And this is where, this is my second home, as that, my wife calls it, my second home. That's amazing. Um, and you know what? It is amazing how quick the time goes by. Too. It does go by. Just, just like that. And you know, the, I'll throw this in as a quick pitch. I've seen this course and mm -hmm. I'm not much of a golfer, but yeah. I can tell you the folks that play it all the time have seen it so much improved over the years yeah. and that's through a lot of uh, so, variety of factors it's so. a lot of help i mean we have so many leagues out here that take the course as their own um, we have the men's club that comes down uh, at the end of may and they do all the flowerings around the tees um, you know we've got people planting uh, stuff on onto the golf course uh, we got the men's club donating money uh, to help brian with uh, you know equipment or whatever he needs we got the friends of simsbury farms donating money we have leveling tees so there's so many things that go on here um, not just from the town uh, aspect of it but from other people around here and they kind of take it as as their little home and and they really appreciate it that's great, John. So last uh, question is not on the list, of course. Yep. If I'm a, a, a young uh, person in a family, or let's just say I've started a family and I've got a, a preteen or even just an early teenager, yep. and they're interested in the game of golf, but they yep. don't know how to do it, what would be your recommendation? Uh, I'd say the first thing is just get them up here onto the drive range. Okay. First thing to do is make sure that they have fun. Um, you don't want to pressure somebody into to going up here or whatever. Um, we want to make sure that they have fun first. So we do, you know, junior clinics that start from age five uh, to nine, and then we do other other camps and clinics uh, throughout the the, the, the year. Um, but most important is that the kids have fun with what they do. Got they it. want to they want to ask mom and dad, hey, can we go up and hit balls today? We don't want to be they don't want to be forced to hit balls. So gotcha. that's the most thing. And, and I'll wrap it up by asking uh, follows that previous yep. question. Uh, for the summer of 24, are there any kind of programs for aspiring golfers, you know, golfers that are new? You know, we, we run, and Mark, does a, Mark, my assistant, does a great job with our junior program. So from the, the last week or the first week of summer to almost the last week, he has something going on every week. Is it the, at least here was the basketball and golf camp. He runs, uh, we run three uh, junior camps uh, for young kids, uh, clinics, sorry. And then we, he has two or three uh, advanced camps for, for kids. So there's always something going on up here. There's always kids up here, and it's just a great place to work. That's awesome. John, tennis and golf in 24, is that going to be a combo? But I think we're going to try. That's we're awesome. With try. Tyler Gibson, yep. and with, yep. that's, that's super. Well, John, thank you very much. I appreciate my pleasure. I'm going to have you introduce Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. Tell a little bit about what Brian does. Brian Johnson we'll... came over six six years ago. 
Um, and he's done. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't forget those things. But he's uh, he's done an unbelievable job. Um, his staff, who's been here for a while, um, just the condition of the golf course, the way that he's, uh, you know, kept the greens in uh, unbelievable condition. Um, he's just done an unbelievable job, and, and he cares. Yeah. And like I said, you know, the, these guys that work down there, they care about the golf course. The people that work here care about the golf course, and that makes it a lot easier to work with. That's awesome. Well, so Brian, I'll have you take the microphone you go, and uh, thank you very much. You just to make sure I've got this right. Is course superintendent your correct title, or what's the uh, what's golf the, course superintendent? Correct. That's excellent. So yeah. I, I'll tell you what. Uh, I sit on Parks and Rec Commission, and I've had uh, the pleasure of hearing the various uh, explanations of what's going on at the course. But I, I think folks don't get a chance like this. <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. To uh, to visit and chat with the course superintendent. So I was hoping you could tell us a couple of things. First off. Uh, in what you do, what is it about the farm's course, because that's what you're superintendent of, what is it about the course, Brian, that you find uh, most impressive? Actually, I think it's been mentioned before, but it is the people here. So not only Friends of Sims Ray Farms, the pro shop, um, the golfers, people walking around on the trail around the golf course, everybody just loves this facility. So it's a pleasure to be here day after day because this is my first home from April to I'd say November, I'm here all the time. So um, I do love the facility and I like how everybody loves it as well. So, mm. so I'll so. dovetail onto that comment and just say, you know, from what I've seen, Brian, <clears throat> sorry about that to the audio engineer, <clears throat> the, uh, the challenges that you see on a day-to-day -day basis, I see you tackle them with, uh, with just a passion. And I have to share this one story. In the spring, we had an unprecedented heat wave and I don't know whether it was April or May or whatever it was. It was April. It was April. And at the time, there was still some construction going on. I don't know if you want to take two seconds and just share that story, because to me, that's an unsung hero that essentially saved the course. Uh, I wouldn't say hero, but um, we were rebuilding the dam structure for our irrigation pond, and it wasn't quite finished, uh, so we were not able to use the irrigation system. And I forgot it exactly if it was April 19th or something early. like that. It was very early. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was early in April. Uh, I needed to irrigate as quickly as possible, so we had to do a quick fix and hook our pond fill well pump up to directly to the irrigation system so we were bypassing our normal pumps to uh, allow us to water for it was basically about a week or two that we really need to irrigate but if we didn't at that juncture um, there would have been severe damage out and, there on the golf course and i'll just say i feel like residents need to know that passion makes a difference because without somebody that was passionate about finding a solution which wasn't there was no book about how here's how you fix this problem you know, you dove in, got the problem solved, avoided any kind of uh, deadening of the greens or even the course itself, and and really uh, made a difference that day. So thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Now, I just have to ask a couple other questions. Biggest challenge that you face? The weather. Okay. It's the first week in September. It's 92, 3, 4 degrees today. Just dealing with that every day. Um, that is why I do love this business. Every day is different, but uh, the extremes nowadays can be kind of crazy. Once we did get the irrigation pond finished this year, we actually had five inches of rain that following Sunday. So everything was stressed to the hill. Um, so it, it's just nonstop weather. So, so I will give you kudos because I feel like people don't realize especially with the summer of 23, the amount of rain that we had in July, the, the challenges that you faced, your team really stepped up big time. And one of the comments that I hear from golfers that have played at other courses was, they don't bounce back like you guys do here. So I give you guys a lot of credit, and ladies, a lot of credit for doing that. I'm gonna jump right to, and I may get into some trouble for this, but your wish list. Uh, you know, there's as a member of the commission, I'm always thinking, okay, improvements, improvements, improvements. Sure. And we use the tax dollars very well. Correct. Like, this is an incredibly efficient, operation correct but there are always things that need to be improved and and uh, i'd like to hear from you what those are yeah some of the big things would be drainage this as a wet year that we've had this year so continuing uh, a drainage program here is really key to uh, getting golfers out here uh, on a day-to-day -day basis cart paths we've been talking about this for over the years also leveling tees the friends of simsbury farm has been very generous in giving us money to level tees so it's a combination of things to get golfers out there as much as possible to enjoy this facility. That's great. That's great, Brian. And any uh, final comments before I have you handed it to uh, John Tebow? 
Uh, this is just a wonderful facility, and uh, if everybody gets a chance to come out here, you don't even have to be a golfer, tennis player, anything. Just walk around the trails out here. Uh, the nature here is unbelievable. The amount of animals that we see out here on a day-to-day -day basis, the pollinators that we have, the natural areas with the wildflowers. Um, you don't have to be into sports to really enjoy this facility. And I tell you what, that's a perfect capsule summary. It's You don't have to be into sports to really enjoy it. So come up, walk around on the, on the fitness trail, do whatever. So, Correct. Brian, thanks very much. I'm going to have you, you introduce much. John Tebow. John Tebow. So, John, uh, it's been here a couple of years, a couple of years. So I'll have you step right <laughs> over here into this uh, spot right there. And uh, first of all, John, thank you so much for uh, for being here and uh, for giving us some of your time. And, uh, you know, I've known you forever. And first of all, you're f incredibly ageless. You look exactly the same as you did when Patrick was, uh, you know, this high. But uh, I just want to have you quick share a few things with us. First would be, I, I guess, tell us a how long you've been here, John, and uh, then I want to hear about some of the experiences you've had over these I've years. I've been here uh, about 37 years, over 37 years. Which is incredible, by uh, the way. Golf clap, golf clap. Yeah. That's just... <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I'm real excited about Simsbury Farms because over the 37 years, we're just as popular as we've ever been. We're still offering quality programs, and that's real exciting. You know, we've had a lot of upgrades to technology and it's, as regards to how we register people, how we get the word out. You know, back in the day, the people who the Jerry Wetchin would remember, you go to the pool, you'd have a special little pass or a little sticker on your skate. Now everything's online. You show your phone to check in and things like that. So although technology has changed, I think people have not, and everybody's just really looking for good quality programs and to create memories. So I kind of see that that's, our, that's really what our goal should be, to create memories every year for the next group of people. So, John, I know folks probably, uh, most many folks will know you if they have kids that have gone through the program. But one of the things I've experienced with you, I didn't put it on the list, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because I know you're a big believer in it, is continuous improvement. And one of the things as a parent I always noticed from year to year to year was you were always making an improvement in the programs that you ran. You want to take a couple of seconds and tell us about that and how you've, you know, that's kind of your mindset? I, yeah, you know, I, I really try to program based on what I like to do, and I don't like to be bored. So, you know, for instance, the pool, you know, back when I first started, the pool was a very stand around. You got wet and everyone had to get out because there would be lap swim. And I, over the years, have really changed that. And we have water slides and beach blanket bingo and foam parties and things like that because I want to create memories. You know, I think we really were kind of the leader in the area about making a pool more of an activity center and more fun than your traditional pool. So yeah, I'm really proud of the fact that we've done that and, again, created great memories for kids. Yeah, and I just I'll echo the sentiment that I've seen over the years, just that increase in programs. And, and I would say increase in energy, I guess, is probably the best way to say it. Mm -hmm. And having kids that have also been lifeguards here, I've also seen you know, the programs that you run, whether it's the certification programs, the various swim programs, and I know you do things year round. So I don't know if you want to take a second and talk about some of the other non-pool programs that you run during the year. Yeah, well, I run the, uh, the other major responsibility is the ice rink, which is a totally different set of, of uh, challenges. Uh, there's definitely weather related challenges. I'm very fortunate to have, to be able to work with Orlando Cassiano and his staff. Um, who do a fantastic job and we work really well together to, to schedule that and we've had you know We had some challenges back with Jerry Toner when uh, ISCC came in But rather than fighting with them, we worked with them and we really have a good program with them I, I see this as kind of a feeder to a lot of their programs So we've worked very well cooperatively and it's it's been a good experience, you know, that's great John So I, I feel like uh, you've reiterated the theme that we've heard pretty much throughout the uh, the interviews here Which is it's a team effort there's the, clearly, uh, uh, you know, that's not not just a uh, a uh, statement, but it's truly in play, right? Uh, no pun intended with the golf, but it's something that you're seeing in person. And so, I, you know, that team theme is one I just wanted to reiterate. And I have to ask this question because it's just me. Your wish list of improvements. If you had the magic wand with no dollars, uh, what would the improvements that you'd like to see be? I, I, I guess I'd like to see uh, maybe eventually uh, real pool furniture out on the pool deck uh, instead of the chairs that break constantly and things mm -hmm. like that, and mm -hmm. we're replacing them. Also, some more interactive type activities like uh, floatable obstacle courses, uh, climbing wall type things. So again, that whole theme of making things uh, you know, fun and not boring. Okay. And I do, I just want to throw in one thing, you know, I am nothing without my staff and I'm very, very fortunate to have hundreds and hundreds of kids that have worked for me. And I really feel that, you know, I kind of, they're the motor, I steer a little bit, 
But the probably my proudest moment, one of the reasons I stayed so long was I just love watching those kids come back and tell me, I'm a doctor, I just had a baby, I'm a teacher, mm -hmm. things like that. So that's really one of the things that I've loved about the position so far. And disc jockeys, I know that we've well, had a disc, disc jockey. Well, that's yeah. a whole other conversation, but yeah. I will say... Uh, one of the things that community members need to know is John's not John is not just a steward of the organization's facility, but also the people that have worked for you over the years. And that is a tribute to what you've done is you've seen them grow and seen them, uh, you know, take take their careers to various heights that you just mentioned. And I think that's a credit to you. So thank you uh, on behalf thank of you. everybody that's uh, been involved. So yeah. thank you very much. And I'll have you uh, introduce uh, Dave Bush. Uh, Dave is the chair of the Simsbury Culture Parks and Recreation Commission. And so Dave, I have some questions and then I'm gonna hand it to you for your comments. But if you don't mind, uh, first of all, Chairman of Culture, Parks and Recreation Commission, do you know how many years it's been? It's been a lot of years, <laughs> Kelly, that's for sure. I think we're, we're up around the 20 year mark. So. Okay, well, uh, I just wanted to say an official thank you to you and having worked side by side with you all those years, I've seen you take a very even uh, keel with the way that you do things, but you're very efficient in doing, getting things accomplished. So I want to say thank you uh, as chair. And really as chair, tell us a little bit about what that means to you, Dave. What, is, what does it uh, mean being, you know, your view of the farms as chair? As many of us have had families grow up in town, we understand how critical recreation is to the family experience. And it was my kids growing up uh, that I wanted to see that they had the best opportunities and the only way you can do that is by volunteering. And you volunteer in something you're interested in, you never work at all. So I think the key to Simsbury is, is that, again, recreation is critical to this community. And if you're going to have that being one of your critical items, then you've got to have a facility that matches that priority. And that's what we have here at the farms. We have a truly unique facility. It's all encased in one spot. Even the way we fund this facility through what's known as a revenue fund, we do not burden the taxpayers extraordinarily at all because it's really much of this is self-funded. Certainly the town does help us with the big capital improvement projects like we have going on now at the golf course, but it is critical to this operation that we continue to see funding from the town to maintain what we've already built. Dave, that's a, uh, you know, I'm just gonna dovetail that. We didn't practice this. I have to make sure people know that, but when you talk about funding, you know, sometimes we don't see where our tax dollars go. And knowing that realtors make this stop one on their trips, right. could you tell us a little bit about how critical that funding is, not just for the continuing operation, but the future of Simsbury? Well, again, the town, in our interaction with the town, one of the words that keeps coming up is stewardship. And stewardship is critical that from a standpoint of, we've built the facility. The facility is a wonderful facility, but you still have to have funding. Whether that funding comes from the friends of the farms, or comes from tax dollars, that has to be maintained. And that's part of what we try to keep an eye on on the Park and Recreation Commission is the fact that we're spending our dollars smartly, but at the same time, we continue to advocate to let this beautiful facility continue to be the gem that everyone knows it is. That's great, Dave. And I have to give you also kudos on the fact that you work collaboratively, right? The uh, commission is advisory in nature. Yes. And you work collaboratively with the town, uh, you know, the, the various folks in town, you know, whether it's uh, Tom, T Tom uh, uh, Taberski or John Tebow or whoever it might be. And I give you a lot of credit for being collaborative, asking questions, offering advice and counsel, but doing it in a, in a community focused and oriented way. So thank you well, very much for doing that. Part of what's lucky about that too, is we've had such great leadership in the director position, whether it was Jerry Toner or Tom Tiberski, without that leadership, things don't happen, things aren't going to be maintained the way they, they really should be. So I've been lucky with the folks that I've had an opportunity to work with from the town. Well, uh, thanks Dave, that's, that's really well said. And you know, when you have a gem, you have to make sure it gets polished, right? And so this is a gem, it's been called a gem. And from your standpoint as the Director of Culture, Parks and Recreation Commission, uh, you know, what is it that you think that needs to be done to keep the gem uh, as a, tr a true gem? Well, I really think that because the golf course is a revenue stream for the entire facility, I think a one area that we really do need to see improvement is we need the restaurant to be enlarged and we need a pavilion or a more stationary uh, area to host golf, golf tournaments and charity events. So as we look down the road, you know, again, whether it's through a bequest to someone for the Friends of the Farms or it's tax dollars from Sims Air, I would see those being the two improvements that would enhance this facility and in turn 
make more revenue that can go back into the facility. So Dave, just to make sure I heard you right, uh, and again, we didn't practice this either, but if I heard you right, that sounds like an expenditure, expenditure that actually turns into an investment that reaps benefits. Is that- is Absolutely, that... absolutely. And that's that reinvestment. And if you reinvest, you're gonna, you're gonna continue to be profitable. If you continue to be profitable, it, that really works for everyone. Gotcha. So if I heard you right, that's the uh, the event pavilion at some point, as well as an expansion of a restaurant that has wonderful uh, uh, potential, right? And Correct. it's done a great job in recent summers, but uh, you, you just want to take a second to reiterate that. That would be wonderful. Well, especially when this originally was built, they envisioned a much larger area to be used as the restaurant. And due to budget constraints, that got cut back significantly. And what we've learned over the years in trying to get vendors to come up and be the vendor for here, they have challenges just based on the size of the kitchen, the size of the restaurant itself. And what I'd really, all I'm asking is, I think we should look back to the original vision and the original plan and then improving on that by getting a more uh, permanent pavilion type facility for the banquets and for the uh, charity events. Really, really well said. And just to make sure, so if I'm a taxpayer in town and I happen to either tune in now or I see this on a tape a little bit later and I hear, well, they're gonna spend money to maybe at some point, right? We're not saying they are, but if they did, you see that as an ultimate benefit to the town as opposed to an expense. Absolutely, okay. and a benefit to the community as well. Okay, Dave, that's great. I know I beat that one uh, pretty much as hard as I could, but just wanted to make sure it got set. So uh, I will hand this to you for your closing comments. And uh, I, first of all, I won't have a chance to say it at the end. Thank you to you. Thank you to everybody that came here today to be a part of this and to raise the profile of the farms and especially the nonprofit, the Friends of Civic yeah. Farms. Well, and first of all, I wanted to say thank you, Kelly, because this whole idea was yours as well as you're putting together the uh, the event itself. I'd also like to though thank the Friends of the Farms. That really has been a great addition. The idea that we have the and uh, now a, a, a corporate entity from which donations can be made where people can direct how they want that donation money spent. I also want to maybe reiterate one comment from Jerry Wetchen is that a bequest is something that someone should really consider. If you love coming up here to golf or you love using the fitness trail, think about the idea that you could be remembered forever by making a bequest for something in particular that is important to you. Uh, other than that, I want to thank the sponsors for the upcoming golf tournament because that's the primary fundraising arm for the Friends of the Farms. And in particular, Mitchell Auto Group and all the other large sponsors, we want to thank them because without them, many of these donations, such as the tea leveling and benches, would never occur. Thanks, Kelly. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.